When you think about money-making businesses, you might think of flashy, lavish industries like luxury, fashion, and automobiles, as well as Hollywood movies and tech products. Although all of these sectors make a lot of money, they aren't always the most profitable. Those Hollywood blockbusters cost millions of dollars to produce, and those automobiles sold for thousands of dollars still cost hundreds of thousands to produce. However, there are a few businesses that make huge money despite spending relatively little on production and manufacturing. Today, we'll explore three of the highest earning industries in the United States. We'll see the amount of money they produce, how much does it cost to operate them, and how they generate all that money. Welcome to World Luxury. Join us as we continue to explore the world of the rich and wealthy. Don't forget to hit the like button turn on that notification bell, and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Without further ado, let's begin. The Tobacco Industry In the United States, the tobacco sector is ranked as the third highest earning industry. The tobacco sector had a net margin of 27.2% in 2019. In 2019, the top six cigarette corporations made approximately $35.1 billion. These statistics might come as a surprise given that individuals have decreased smoking over the years. However, there are a number of factors that maintain the tobacco industry profitable. To start off, the cost of cigarettes has risen substantially over the years, and this is not due solely to the recent tax cut. Tobacco corporations have purposely raised their prices, and if you're addicted, you'll spend whatever it takes. Cigarette production is relatively inexpensive. 533 million pounds of tobacco have been harvested in 2018, which is a lot of money for a plant that is relatively cheap to grow and sells for around $1,500 per acre. The majority of the cost of tobacco comes from marketing, which tobacco does a lot of. They invested $9.06 billion on advertisements in the United States alone in 2018, which equates to $25 million a day. And while tobacco has taken was affected by vaping, that doesn't imply tobacco is losing money. Altria, the world's largest tobacco firm, spent $12.8 billion to acquire 35% of Juul Incorporated, implying that tobacco owns a significant share of the vaping frenzy that is sweeping the country. Altria is also the parent firm of several notable tobacco companies, including Philip Morris USA, which distributes Marlboro, John Middleton, the world's second largest cigar producer, and USA Smokeless Tobacco Company, which manufactures Skull in Copenhagen. Investment Managers In 2019, investment management had net margins of 29.1%. In sum, the industry made $3.2 trillion that year, which is more than California's GDP. Investment managers, as the name suggests, manage investments. They assist rich customers to develop their financial security through diversified portfolios, assess the risk involved in investments, and review the investments to ensure they continue to be cautious decisions. The average compensation for this position is $100,407, but it skyrockets as you get closer to the major areas like Washington, D.C., New York, and Los Angeles. Investment managers are frequently employed by hedge funds, because their fees are calculated as a percentage of the amount invested. Investment managers have similar interests as their clients. Hedge funds typically charge 20% on returns, which implies that if they can transform a $100 million investment into a $200 million investment, they will profit by $20 million. Furthermore, investment managers charge a managing fee, which is normally 1-2% to of the initial amount invested meaning they can make millions of dollars simply by managing the money. However, you must have an academic background in either business or finance, and it can frequently take 10 to 15 years to gain enough trust within a company to eventually take on an active position as an investment manager. Investment management expenses are not excessive, which increases their profit margin. Pharmaceutical companies Pharmaceutical firms are not everybody's cup of tea. Several polls have repeatedly rated it has the worst industry, with people more than twice as likely to express negative things about it as favorable. Even so, they're making a lot of money, and how could they not? 
people need medications to survive. In 2019, pharmaceutical businesses had net margins of 30% on average. Between 2000 and 2018, 35 large pharmaceutical companies earned a total of $11.5 trillion in sales. Medication prices have been steadily rising for decades. From 2018 to 2019, 4,311 prescription medications suffered price increases, with an average 21% rise. Pharmaceutical corporations primarily make money by selling pharmaceuticals at a ridiculous markup, particularly in the U.S. The top 13 pharmaceutical corporations generate 45% of their profits just in the United States. Relenta costs roughly $5.99 per pill in the United States, but just about 1.67 cents in Canada. More well-known medications, such as insulin, are frequently surrounded by controversy and indignation. As a result, three producers manage 96% of the global supply of insulin. The U.S. market contributes to 15% of their usage, but nearly 50% of their revenue. But precisely how much money are they making? One extensively covered story was of Martin Shrekley and Theola. Theola is a medication used to treat a rare kidney condition. The firm that manufactured it was purchased by a rival pharmaceutical business headed by Martin Shrekley in 2014. The medication was offered for $1.50 per pill and was produced for merely cents. However, the price was raised to $30 per pill, and it was entirely legal to sell. As a matter of fact, even after Shrekley stepped down, the corporation continued to market Piola at that price. They manufacture a relatively inexpensive product that is vital for life and offer it at exorbitant costs. Many individuals contend, nevertheless, that these drug corporations spent the majority of their income researching and developing new treatments. Over an eight-year period, the 13 largest pharmaceutical corporations spent $643 billion on research while spending $1.04 trillion on marketing. What are your thoughts on these industries? Which would you most likely enter to earn a few thousand bucks? Post your thoughts and comments in the section below. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. We're hoping to see you in our future videos.